out there somewhere. It's a kayak and a gear. And this is the tent scene. It's just climb into this tent in your dry suit. Tracking everything, doesn't matter. Just about as wet as it can get. Without being underwater. At least I can breathe. Like it's gonna be this way for a couple days. Maybe get a break in 24 hours. Here we are again. It's uh, been raining for about 20 hours straight, I suppose, since yesterday. And it's about 9 o'clock in the morning. And I'm still camped next to this river. It's low tide now. Or falling pretty close to low tide. So you see, I'm really far away from the ocean down the river. It's going to take a bit to get down there. For some reason this river doesn't have a good run of salmon. I couldn't figure it out. Maybe they came in the middle of the night or something. Usually thousands of pink salmon are moving up every single stream possible. Chums too, but not now. I don't know what's up with this river. Doesn't seem to be much fish in it. But it's a supply of water. It's just been dumping. Uh, my sleeping bag's about half soaked through. Just about everything I own is soaking wet. You can see, uh, see in the kayak here how much water accumulated overnight. Uh, probably three or four gallons of water in the, just in the space of that little cockpit. And water coming up from the ground, water everywhere. So water I don't have an issue with. Dry stuff I do, um, a little bit between squalls right now, and it looks like it's still blowing and still nasty out there. Weather system is supposed to clear up by the middle of the day and it's supposed to be actually get quite calm in the afternoon, so I'll believe it when I see it. But by then the tide will come back in and I'll be able to move down this river and make an attempt anyway to get across the Prince of Wales late this afternoon, if possible. It's been a wet one. <clears throat> Here it is. The uh, departure from No Fish Creek. I don't know. The storm passed. It's supposed to drop down to calm winds by midnight tonight. I'll have light until about 10 o'clock. It might be enough to make the passage. I'm about 12 to 13 miles over to uh, Prince of Wales Island. So just a couple things to store and hit the water and see. I'll make the call when I hit that far point out there. If it's good, I'll go for it. And, and it's 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Realistically, I have about 5 hours of daylight left. Ooh, there's some first signs of some really good salmon down there. Deep. And to be expected off the south end of this island. Just with the mist going up in the hills. And up to Clarence Strait. Another really tough point. My target, Prince of Wales. And down there in a couple of clouds. Nice an entrance and all the way. Alright, I think I'm about, about halfway. Behind me, that's Gravina Island. And that's Cliffs, I don't know if they'll come out very well, but the sun on them. It's just cliffs of forest. Looks like the hills of Maui. Gorgeous stuff. Up to Clarence Passage. And then Prince of Wales over there. Alright. I made landfall yet, half a mile off, but that's Prince of Wales, one of the outer points. Um, about all I can find now. The squall came in, you can tell it's dumping rain. And it's getting pretty bleak. The wind came up to about 20 knots, but luckily it was mostly behind me, so I got to surf a bit on the way in. And we're almost there. Alright, coming in around this island, I don't know what it is. I haven't been able to get the GPS out, it's been pretty nasty. There's a lot of reefs on either side of me, and a lot of breaking waves. I'm just trying to find my way through it navigating with the fish finder and it's getting quite dark and it's raining 
Alright. See him into some calm water now. I got knocked off track a bit with that squall. So I missed the bay that I was looking for. The sound more appropriately. Mora sound or Miora sound. I can't pronounce it because I never heard it said. But calm now. I made the passage, I uh, came in a little high, had to round down a couple points, so I added a good three or four miles to the trip at least, and then I'm trying to get back in the bay a bit, so it wasn't such an easy passage, and you can see I'm running out of lights, so this is probably my last one for the day. End of the day, beautiful, but I'm still miles away from finding a beach, hopefully uh, there's one around that far point right there. I think it's recording. I can see something in the back here. God, it's dark. I don't know if you can see my face. I just chased off a bear. I just got to Prince of Wales. It's late. It's an uh, hour past dark. I didn't want to, but it took a long time to get across. And as soon as I set up camp, I noticed reflection. Out there in the dark, two eyes close together, and uh, it was a big brown bear, probably about, I don't know, 300 pounds. I moved fast and he moved soft. You can't even hear him walk. He was probably 50 feet away when I noticed him. Threw rocks, yelled, he took off down the beach. I hope he keeps going. I gotta figure out a way to hang my food tonight. My welcome to Prince of Wales. Here I am, Prince of Wales. The food's hung. Uh, I think I scared the bear. He scared me. I probably made three trips up and down the beach, all of my stuff. And uh, who knows if he was watching me or not. Struggling. It's probably after midnight now. But I got the boat way up on a log, so if he does mess with the boat, it's going to come crashing down. I'd hear it. Got the food hung, good 15 feet off the ground, uh, so that should be pretty safe. It was a big bear, it was at least 300 pounds and just a nice brown coat. Close enough for me to hit him with a rock or two. And uh, he wasn't in a big hurry to leave, but uh, when I pelted him, he took off, so... I'm not real comfortable with it, but there's not much I can do. My first time seeing a bear in two weeks of camping in Alaska, so just don't want to see one right about the time I'm going to bed. So hope everything's all right in the morning. All right, first night on Prince of Wales, and the morning after, I should say. <clears throat> morning after the bear. Bear was here to greet me as I was loading up my stuff and setting up my tent. I turned around and saw the eyes in the dark, about right where that water is down there. He uh, moved pretty fast around that end of that log and only responded to move away anyway when I hit him with a rock and he took off pretty good. Went down to that end of the cove and disappeared into the trees but he's a big big brown bear a few hundred pounds at least it wasn't not the little boy so I got my food hung up high I got it all up there on two strings amazingly I still have a lot of food it's early in the trip and found a little flat area back here by the stream of course this stream's not gonna hold any fish or anything so I think I'm pretty close to Myrtle Lake. I'm gonna go try to find that this morning. Before the tide goes too far. And the tide's falling like it does in Alaska every morning in the summer. Falling fast. So moving on, explore a couple lake entrances and try to get to Kugel Lake by the time the tide's
entrance to Myrtle Myrtle Lake. Stuff in there somewhere. All right, here's the outflow to Myrtle Lake. I don't think I can get through there. Damn, that's nice. And there, uh, don't really see any fish yet, but they bring a barge in. Well, this is the closest point to. Myrtle Lake and supposedly it's just about a hundred yards to that wood but as you can see there's no trail it's just dense dense rainforest I don't know how I would get a kayak through there take me days to go a hundred yards and the stream is impassable it's just too steep but yeah just gorgeous stuff so I might not get a look at Myrtle Lake. I might have to go around the corner and head for Keegan. Looks like it's more accessible. At least I know there's a trail in there. Alright, the entrance to Myrtle Lake. Alright, here's the... Uh, here's Myrtle Creek, which goes up to Myrtle Lake. It's pretty steep. Probably uh, a good half mile of that up to the lake. There's a way to cut around the other side and just walk a couple hundred yards, but I didn't see a trail there. Uh, there's another spillway out there, a little island that formed. Obviously, it's low to low tide right now, and the tide's got to come up another 10 feet, but I don't think I'm going to explore this lake today. Keep moving on down to. Okay, how easy it is to catch a rock. I found a pinnacle, 135 feet, schools of flags of rocks right on the other side of them. Current's coming in, got a four ounce bar jig, just let it hit the bottom. It won't ever get to the bottom. Down 60 feet, 70 feet, cap 80 feet. Ah, it's getting pretty deep. That 110 feet. And I'm hooked up. That's a bit. Got that one about 150 feet deep. 